All right, guys, so what we have here is a 1960 Ford Sunliner convertible that the convertible top is not going down for some reason. We don't know why yet. So we're gaining access to the rear where the pump is located, and we're going to do some troubleshooting. Take a look at the color difference underneath where those screws were at. Yeah, this thing needs some cleaning, that's for sure. All right, so we got the screws off this cover here, and we're folding it back. See what it's going to take to get into it. And you'll see we have a little bit of trouble getting everything loose, folding stuff out of the way. Okay, here we're working it up from the sides. Got to pull it out of this groove that it's slid into. This side doesn't work quite as easy. We do eventually get it, but we had to try a couple times. All right, here we go. So it just kind of pops out of there. It's a stiff edge on it. And it popped out of where it's being held in. And once we got the sides loose, we found we couldn't pull the very back loose. And we eventually just gave up on doing that, and we just folded it up and out of the way to do what we're going to do. Tried looking in the trunk, and yeah, I think we just needed to really get in there, and that was too difficult. Okay, so then we got this panel that we got to remove. And hiding behind this panel, between the panel and the rear seat, is where the pump is going to be at. Here it comes out. It's just pretty much cardboard there. And there we go. We see hiding down in there, full of mouse pee and poop and, yeah, all kinds of nasty stuff. There's our pump. That's the pump that controls the convertible top. And we got a voltmeter out here. We're going to check for voltage while the switch is being pushed up front. And pretty much the results are not looking good. It's very confusing. Never seeing 12 volts back here for some reason. So we're going to have to go up front and do some troubleshooting up by the switch up front. Okay, here we go. Looks like a steering wheel, but then some wood and the dash and oh, there I am. All right, we're peeking underneath the dash here. There are a lot more wires than I would have thought for a 1960 car, but right there, that was our switch. And then I'm stuck. Yeah. Okay, then we're back to the back, trying a few more things, and all of them are pretty unsuccessful but what we finally tried was testing between ground and the motor and sure enough we do have continuity between the motors leads and ground so that's not good another thing we found was there's this two post thing in the engine compartment and that's connected to the solenoid and then it pushes power over to the switch. Okay, we need to get at this pump some more. So we're gonna remove the seats because trying to reach down in through that little crack without getting the back panel off all the way is not very easy. <clears throat> okay, rear seat. The bottom is out. Now we gotta get the back off. A little bit crusty, but we've got some bolts on the floor there 
that hold the back on. So we just need to break those free, scratch off the rust a little bit. And I think some of this rust was probably from mouse pee. There you go, you can see it's pretty crusty looking. Okay, breaking that thing loose. So really it's just the two bolts there that hold that rear seat back on. Once we get those off, it just pops up and out. And here's the second one over on the passenger side. That one was not rusty, so this one goes a lot easier. Here comes the seat, just gonna bang it up. And then it pops right out. It's just slid into some brackets with those two bolts on the bottom. Pretty easy. It'd be a lot easier to get it out if the roof was down. All right, there's our pump. With a lot of nasty stuff under that seat. I'm glad we removed it because that just tells us we have a lot of cleaning to do. It smelled really, really, really bad. There we go, peeking out the back window. And now we're removing all that mouse nest and into the dump. Okay, just got to crack these fittings loose. There's two of them. One on the bottom of the motor, one on the top. Just crack them loose and then we should be able to undo them with our fingers once they're cracked loose. If they're not corroded too bad. Here's the yummy part. Getting my fingers down there where the mice like to do their pee in. Yeah, these came out pretty easy. There you go. You can see the grime getting on my fingers. Believe me, I did not lick them. Okay. And then we just got a couple of bolts that hold that into the car itself. Those were pretty easy to get off, no problems there. One of them's got a ground to go into it. There you go, nice and tasty. All right, motor's out. Yeah, but with it uh, short in the ground, it's probably gonna have to be replaced. But we'll see if we can find like just half of it or something. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm.